I like it. I like it a lot. So that right there is our last load of first crop bales. Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to Ormond Cementals. It is Monday afternoon. It's actually pretty darn nice out. Uh, we are gonna go uh, pick up some bales and then I do need to move the cows. That being said, I'm gonna take the next chunk, the next field, uh, divide it in half like I mentioned, may have mentioned, uh, cut that thing in half, let them have that field. And if you haven't yet, please hit that subscribe button, support the channel. Uh, we're doing pretty darn good. We're at like, what, a little over, a little over 1,100 subscribers. So we're doing all right, but there's plenty of room for more. I want you to subscribe, follow along, so we don't miss nothing. Um, I think also for today, while we do the setup and move, I think I'm gonna do a little bit of discussing about getting into rotational grazing. Um, Cause I talk about it all the time. I show a lot of moves, show how I set stuff up and all that good stuff. But I guess potentially one question out there is, well, Chris, you have all the stuff. Of course you can do it, but how do you get started? Or how could you get started? You know, all that kind of stuff. So maybe we'll talk about that today. Cause there's some things that, yeah, I've got reels and all sorts of posts and all that kind of stuff. But I did start somewhere and I didn't start with all the fancy reels and all that kind of stuff. I quickly went to that, but I can show you some of the stuff that I started with and talk about some of the, you know, easier, simpler options and kind of just some of the how to get started, where and when kind of thing, at least how I did it and from other things that I've seen. So, all right, let's get going. All right, dad is gonna unload that load. We didn't do quite a full load. We left four bales off um, just to save ourselves a little weight uh, cause it is still a little spongy out there. Let's head up into the barn and we shall talk about kind of how I got started equipment wise in rotational grazing. Equipment wise, because somehow you need, you do need to kind of divvy stuff up. I, I do think you do need some equipment. Um, you don't need the super fancy posts. You don't need the super fancy reels, um, all that kind of stuff. Uh, one, and I still hold on to it. When I first got started, I actually started with uh, using these just like electrical cord reels and these essentially will work uh, the same as any of my other reels except they're just not geared you know so there's a there's a handle this black parts a handle or is like your pivot point and then there's a handle on the side so you just grab onto it and you can still reel it up this was literally like six eight bucks you know and you can put a ton of uh, a poly braid or a poly wire on there uh, you you can you can put a lot of stuff on there so if you don't want to spend the money on reels because some of the reels even the cheaper non-geared reels are going to be you know in that 30 40 dollar range i think the last time i saw geared reels they were maybe around 60 dollars a piece it's been a little while now um prices have gone up rapidly in the last couple years uh, but we won't talk anymore about that um but then posts a super cheap option for posts are the 3 8 fiberglass posts I got these at Fleet Farm. You probably can get them at any of your local um, ag store, but they're just, they're a smooth, they're all smooth, three eighths post. Okay, and then these things, what are they? Like a buck a piece, buck 50 a piece. And then you can buy these little black tabs here. You can buy the black ones, the plastic ones, or you can get like, um, 
the little metal ones that actually, I think they look like a spring and you clip them and slide them on. Uh, the black ones, they're a little bit of a pain to get on the first time, but then you can slide them up. They got a grip, so. Um, but that's a pretty easy, pretty quick, dirty, cheap way for to get started with posts. It doesn't have to be a fiberglass or a plastic post. Uh, they just happen to be nice because it doesn't matter if the wire pops off or something, then uh, it's not grounded to the ground. Uh, next best cheap starter post, I guess would be, I guess would be these guys. You know, I, I've used these before. I've talked about these. Essentially a 3 8 fiberglass rod with these black clips on it. Um, these, I've seen these at Tractor Supply. I've seen them at Fleet Farm, Farm and Fleet, maybe even Menards type of stores or a Lowe's. Um, Home Depot might have them. And then along with that, then they've got these square plastic ones. These guys, I like them. Some of them I like more than others. The white ones, at least from what I've gotten, are kind of cheap. Uh, the black ones that we have are a little bit different plastic and they're actually pretty old. They're like seven, eight years old and they're still hanging on. Some of those I bought at Fleet, which is just happens to be our local one. Um, yeah, do I wear a lot of Fleet shirts? Yeah, because they were five bucks. They were cheap. That's why I have a lot of Fleet shirts. As far as wire goes, if you have a bunch of like regular wire, go ahead and use it. If you don't mind reeling up wire, if you've got your own like reeling system for wire, um, go that route. Um, as far as buying poly wire or poly braid, uh, so this is that poly wire. I, you know, I, I have some of this. I, um, as regular wire, I've used this in, in, in place of like a metal wire. I have used this and it lasts. Uh, it's got, I think this stuff has nine strands. So one way to note the quality or at least the shockability quality is you can see in there the little strands of metal, okay? Some of the good stuff, even when you look at poly braid, uh, which I'll show you next, um, the, the better stuff is gonna have nine uh, conductors. Basically it has nine strands woven through, more opportunity to shock and over the length of the, of the wire as stuff kinks and turns and bends. Some of those wires might break, but then you still have the other strands um, there to back it up if you don't have, um, if something maybe is starting to fray or whatever. But comparing the poly wire to poly braid. So this stuff is, might be hard to see, but it is like braided through there along with the strands of steel. Now those are, this is the stuff I got from Ken Cove. Uh, when I bought reels and uh, the nice posts, um, kind of the O'Brien step-in knockoffs, I guess you could call it. This one's technically broken, but uh, these guys, I got these from Ken Cove. Um, those guys have not broken um, because it's bad. They've broken because a cow snapped it off. <laughs> so uh, some of those posts are like 10 years old. But you're, you're going to break some over time. So that's kind of like posts and wire. That poly wire is going to be cheaper than the poly braid. Um, and then, you know, but you're going to need something to string to string up because you're ultimately you want to divide paddocks and we'll talk about that when we get out there so that right there is our last load of first crop bales and the hay yard is nice and full which is cool so that that was a nice nice thing to get done tonight so all right 
we are heading out and we're gonna move the cows. So back on to getting started with rotational grazing. Um, you know, and I've talked about the benefits that I look at from my perspective, some of the benefits of rotational grazing. Uh, it is forage utilization. You know, another one is to, you know, always keep your forage in a fairly vegetative state. Um, and the only reason I say it that way is, you know, depending on your acreage and, you know, that kind of stuff, like how much of a rest you can give them. But when you go through multiple times, you know, I've said I don't mind, um, I don't mind if the forage gets a little older because there's typically something in there that's good. And if they don't eat it, then I hope they trample it. And if they don't trample it, then they'll leave it and they'll trample it or maybe they'll eat it the next time. I don't know, maybe they'll like it old. You don't know, but it's either gonna be new seed for later, it's gonna get trampled, uh, making for good biomatter on the ground, on the dirt, shielding it from the sun. You know, you want the sun to get to the grass, yes, but you don't want the sun to necessarily get to the dirt because then you're gonna dry out the dirt. Uh, so you want that little bit of a barrier. That's why I say I don't mind them trampling, like trampling a third, eating a third, maybe leaving a third. You know, kind of like that perspective or that, you know, goal kind of thing. Um, and once you kind of have that first round of trampling done, you know, then it's kind of there for the summer. So then after that, if the grass isn't as tall later, it's gonna be some really lush stuff. Kind of like this stuff. This is very, very nice stuff. They are gonna absolutely love this. And this is what they're going into right now. Um, this is some of this, like this reed canary grass. This is knee high. Um, the blue grass that's in here is about 12 inches tall. There's some rye in here that's 12 inches tall. Uh, this reed actually headed out again. So that's cool. You know, things like that. So they're gonna go into this, but they had already been through it once already. And this is what was trampled the last time. Yeah, there's not a whole ton of dry matter trampled because I don't have to dig too far to get to the dirt, but it is there. So as far as how do I get started in the actual pasture? So let's say, for let's just use this chunk as an example. Let's just say this is your pasture for the whole summer. It doesn't matter if this is an acre or a hundred acres because you have a chunk of grass and you have a water source. Right now it's the yellow water. To get started, if you don't wanna deal with water, or at least changing your water system, this is our water, right there, right that guy. That's our water. So you need to set up a rotation around that water and that's what we've done. We essentially now have three water stations. We've got that yellow one, we've got the blue one up by the house and the garage, and then down there we've got that steel one, which is on the same line that runs along that fence. If your normal course was, I'm gonna let my cows, I let my cows out in my pasture and they sit out there all summer long. Kind of look at the way you're doing things and say, can I get, can I get like six chunks that I can put my animals on for even a week? Cause I, I definitely, I would not put on, if I'm gonna rotationally graze, I'm not putting my animals on a chunk for longer than like, four or five days. I really would like it only to be three days max because then you start getting uh, new growth coming up and things like that and then they're gonna go after new growth. But if you say, I only got time to rotate once a week, only on the weekends, and this is where your trial and error comes into, into play like I did this summer. I screwed up on this east pasture when it was super muddy and rainy and all that stuff and uh, we'll cross our fingers and hope and pray that it comes back decent next spring. I'm pretty confident it will. But this is where trial and error comes in. You would take your whole chunk and you'd maybe wanna look for, can I break it up into four, five, or six pieces 
so that they can spend a week on each piece, a week or less. Because the goal would be go through all your chunks and not let them back at the beginning for like four, five, six weeks would be the best. You know, and that's why I say, you know, if you had six chunks and you could do like a week at a crack. Um, but now if you're only gonna go a few days or like two days like I do or one day, those chunks get smaller. The shorter the duration in, the, in your paddock, the smaller the piece. Uh, because you're moving them, you're moving them quicker. Um, you're moving them more often on the new grass so that chunk will get smaller. Like say you have 10, say you have 10 acres and you give them a half an acre every day. Well, now that's 20 moves, you know, so now that's 20 days. But can you make that even a little bit smaller so you can stretch that out to like 45 days? Depends on your stocking rate. How many animals do you have on your acreage? I know that's a lot of information and that's hard to figure out at first, but you already have the number of animals you have in your pasture already. But if you're starting to feed hay in late summer, granted we are, or we will be, just because of my mistake. Um, but if you have the same animals, say you have 10, 10, say you have 10 animals on 10 acres, and that's your scenario. Now, if you can start making those chunks smaller and ro rotating them, and now bringing them back after those after those chunks have rested for four, five, six weeks. Um, now hopefully getting more forage, better quality forage in those second and maybe even a third rotation through your through your pastures. That may not have been a short way to explain how you start doing it, but it's really, where's your water source? And then you kind of got to revolve around your water source. So I'm, I'm guessing, and then I'm guessing if you're just getting started, your first thing is, I already have water. I don't want to have to set up another thing of water. Understood. That's why we only have, for a long time, we only had the two, the blue one and the yellow one. We added the silver one after we started using that chunk more in the springtime for having the heifers and the early calvers out there. And using that chunk as more of, a, of an actual part of our rotation. So, all right, let's set up this chunk, enough of me rambling, and we'll get them in here and then we'll walk around amongst the cows and we'll talk a little bit more. All right, we got the ribbon put back up, and I do have to leave this temp line up. Uh, so obviously they don't go out to where they were a couple days ago. Um, everything else looks pretty decent. I got to move some stuff over there. And they went much, much better this time. Way better than the time that I got my boots stuck in the mud and fell flat on my face. And that wasn't exactly pure mud either. But as far as what I'm talking about, as far as getting started in rotational grazing, this is just my two cents worth. Stuff that I've done, stuff that I've seen other people do, uh, seminars I've watched, other YouTube channels I've watched. So the other biggest piece of advice that I would give is watch and learn what other people are doing. YouTube is such a great resource for it. Um, I definitely would try and look up Greg Judy because uh, he's got some really good stuff. And there's other guys that are out there. Just search rotational grazing. Because what what I did when I watch when I watch any channel, you know, ones that I follow regularly or new ones, you know, I'm not only watching it from an entertainment standpoint, but what are they doing? Like I look at how they have. Um, their setup, and I'll flip you around. You can look at the cows instead of me while I'm talking. You know, I'm I'm always looking at what's their setup. Like, are they working on material? You know, cattle handling. What's their chute or their alley system? How do they have it set up? Do they have like a bud box type of thing going on or whatever? Or how they wean? You know, ranching sodax got a really nice uh, way that they sort off calves. It's kind of like a half height where the bottom of the gate's not there and the calves sneak underneath. You know, we've, I've seen that once before, but not really that much in action. I've seen a couple, lately they've had a couple videos on that. Uh, so it's kind of watching other people, seeing how they do it and say, you know what? I like the way they did that. I might try that. I like the way they did this. I might try that. 
I've tried this and I didn't really like that. You know, that kind of thing. You know, it's not everybody's, not the way everybody does stuff is gonna necessarily work for you. You know, so, you know, it's kind of like the, the comment I made yesterday is if nothing changes, nothing changes. So if you wanna try something, you gotta change the way you're doing it in order to get a different result or maybe get a different result. Maybe you get a worse result, maybe you get a better result. You know, you don't know until you try. So that's, that's just my, my two cents worth on, you know, just some ways that you can just get into rotational grazing, try it. You don't have to go whole hog into it. And you know, if, if you want, rotate every single day, rotate every hour, doesn't matter. Rotate every couple of days, rotate once a week. I would say if you're gonna try it, don't let them in there longer than a week. That's, I, I wouldn't, I would not go longer than that. Try and get to, try and get somewhere between that one, that one and three day rotation. Because after like three days, you're gonna start getting your clovers are gonna start popping and some of your grasses. And they're gonna be like, ooh, the good stuff. The ice cream is here all the time. Um, you know, and then they're gonna, you know, after they do that for a couple of days, now you've overgrazed your pasture. So yeah, that's just my two cents worth on getting started. Watch other people, see what they do, take notes on what they do. Maybe you like everything that I talked about. But even if you grab like, oh, hey, that one cord reel was kind of neat. And for the price you pay, that's, that's really easy way to get into it instead of paying 50 or 60 bucks. I'm okay, you know, reeling a little longer. If that's the only thing you got out of it, awesome. Get a couple more things, even better. So, yep. And this is the way I want, this is what I like coming back to on the second rotation. You know, knee high, grasses, clovers, you know, just all sorts of really good stuff. And then you get nice thick calves like this, nice real thick bulls like that. Yup, yup. I like it, I like it a lot. All right, so I got a couple other things I gotta do tonight. Call us the end of the video. Hope you guys liked the video. If you got any questions on anything I talked about today, leave them in the comments. Hit that thumbs up button, and don't forget to subscribe because it helps the channel, and follow along for more. And as always, thanks for coming along.